Comet C-2023-83 Suchinchan Atlas has dazzled billions around the globe for weeks, and now it's time to say goodbye. This was my first terrible picture of the comet before sunrise on October 3rd, and this was my final time imaging the comet on October 19, 2024 after sunset, with a couple of nice images in between. I will try again in 80,000 years. Isaac Gomez had a much better look at the comet before the comet made its way around the sun in Texas on October 2nd. We get one of these bright comets in the night sky every once in a while, and for this particular comet from its discovery back in January 2023, we knew that it would be brilliant. It was independently discovered by two different facilities. The first is the Purple Mountain Observatory in China, which provides the Suchinshan designation, discovered the comet back in January 2023 and the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, known as ATLAS, their observatory in South Africa, found it again independently in February 2023, about six weeks after the Purple Mountain Observatory. But I guess in the astronomy world, they both get equal credit. The rest of us got a 22 month heads up, and anything could have happened to the comet in that time, especially when it got near the sun at perihelion at the end of September. And it got close to a couple of coronal mass ejections, but it survived and gave us a great show. The comet traveled very quickly, especially at perihelion, reaching speeds of 67 kilometers per second, comparing that to the International Space Station, which crawls at 8 kilometers per second, and it's no contest. In this short time lapse from October 19, we can see the comet moving very quickly in relation to the background stars in about 50 minutes. And its incredible speed is why we only get to see the comet in the sky for a few weeks before it disappears again. A lot of people were able to take amazing pictures of the comet, but some people were extremely lucky and were able to image it for 10 straight days like Chris Beck here. Who did you make a deal with and can you please send me their contact information? I shouldn't really be that jealous because I myself had the opportunity to image this comet on four separate occasions, which is four times longer than the Comet ZTF back in 2023, where I really had clear skies just for just one session. And three of my sessions this time around involved dozens of other people who were around me and I loved interacting with all of them and, and I especially loved interacting with the kids and pointing out the comet, especially when it was visible to the naked eye, even from light polluted areas. And my most favorite session so far has been in central Massachusetts, where I drove out to the Wachusett Reservoir Dam on October 12th, where the western horizon had almost no light pollution. So after the comet set, we were still able to see the tail for another 15 minutes or so, which was an incredible sight. I lost track of the number of people who stopped by to look at the comet with their naked eyes or through the LCD screens of two of my setups, including the few co cops who stopped by and made me leave my stuff behind to move my car. Uh, luckily, I came back and everything was still there. And the reason October 12th was magnificent is because that's when the comet was at its closest point to Earth, at a distance of about 0.47 astronomical units, or about 70 million kilometers slash 44 million miles. It was extremely close and it was pretty much right in front of us. And the tail of the comet was also humongous. As seen in this photo taken by Adam Block, which also became NASA's astronomy picture of the day, we can see just how long the tail is. I've seen reports that the tail got as long as 22 degrees, and that's about the size of 44 full moons. And that's huge. I wish I had dark enough skies to be able to see all of that. I think from my darkest area, which was in central Massachusetts, the length of the tail that I measured out was about maybe 10 degrees, maybe 12 degrees at most. So we measured the length of the tail in degrees instead of miles or kilometers because here on Earth, it's easier to show how much of the sky something takes up because we can compare it to things like the sun and the moon, which are about half a degree in the sky. An angular size is much easier to visualize for us here on this globe. But if we were to talk about the actual size of the comet, Last report I read is that the comet's tail at its longest could have been up to 30 million kilometers, which is really long. The anti-tail also started to show about a day or two after that, and it looked like a laser beam. Very nicely shown in this image by Brian Fulda, which deservedly became NASA's astronomy picture of the day on October 21st. The anti-tail is often mistaken as an optical illusion, but it's actually a very real thing. A comet can have three different types of tails. As the comet moves, the sun is responsible for two types of tails. The first is the dust tail, where pressures from the solar radiation pushes dust away and is generally very wide and it's mostly what we see. 
Sometimes a solar ultraviolet radiation will ionize some of the particles flying off the comet, causing a gas or an ion tail. And this is the plasma that we can see. And finally, as the comet moves away from the sun, it leaves behind dust particles that can be seen as an anti-tail from Earth if we happen to pass through the comet's orbital plane as seen in this state of some arc animation. And this comet had all three tails at one point or another. Michael Yeager caught this amazing ion tail and this is one of my most favorite pictures of the comet. And as we saw from photos, this comet is very dusty. So a lot of the pictures that we see are kind of colorless, yellowish or grayish as Amelia shows in this photo. Some of the more recent images I've seen on social media shows that the comet is starting to develop a little bit of green, similar to the ones that we've seen in other comets such as comet C2022E3ZTF in 2023. And comets generally glow green if they have a couple of different types of molecules that interact with the solar radiation. The molecules are generally diatomic carbon, which are just two different carbon atoms in a molecule, or cyanogen, which is two carbons surrounded by two different nitrogen atoms. I don't know the exact science behind this, so if you know more, please feel free to educate me. Uh, but if I'm right, let me know. At the time I'm making this video and at the time I've published this video, the comet is still in the sky, so you still have a chance to see it, especially if you have binoculars. You can use, still use your cell phones or a regular camera, take some few second exposures of the western horizon. It's actually much higher in the sky. It's getting closer and closer to the Milky Way core. Just take some pictures, you'll be able to see it. And the darker your skies, the better. But for the first couple of weeks of November, there's still a chance that you'll be able to see it with lower power binoculars and your cell phones. But as we get later into the year, you'll need higher power telescopes to be able to see the nucleus of the comet. And as time goes by, it'll get dimmer and dimmer and the tail will eventually start to get small enough that it doesn't really take up much of your field of view anyway. But it's been a really fun ride watching this comet streak across the sky for a few weeks. And now we patiently wait for the next visitor from the mysterious and theoretical Oort Cloud or maybe even the Kuiper Belt. Until then, keep looking up. Mm -hmm.